Welcome to Everyone's a Millionaire podcast, where we explore the world of wealth and finance and provide insights and inspiration to help you achieve your financial goals. Do you ever dream of becoming a millionaire but don't know where to start? Or perhaps you're already on your way to accumulating significant wealth but want to learn more about the strategies and habits of other successful millionaires. In this podcast, we'll bring you interviews with successful entrepreneurs, investors, and financial experts, as well as research-based insights and practical tips to help you build and grow your wealth. We'll cover topics such as how to invest in stocks, real estate, and other assets, how to manage debt and save for retirement, and how to build a mindset for financial success. Whether you're just starting out on your financial journey or you're a seasoned investor already looking for new insights and ideas, Everyone's a Millionaire is the podcast for you. So sit back, relax, and join us as we explore the fascinating world of wealth and finance. Hey guys, welcome back. This is your host, David Dodge, and today I am joined by a really, really good friend of mine, Mr. Eric Hatch. I've known Eric for probably around five years at this point, and he is not only an awesome human, but a kind soul and a beast in the in, in business. So I'm really, really happy to have Mr. Eric Hatch here. Eric Hatch is out of Fargo, North Dakota, and uh, Eric's going to give us a quick bio. Welcome, Eric. How are you, my friend? Double D, David Ja. I just struggle saying your name, David Dodge. I think I've been drinking all day. It's uh, it's five o'clock somewhere. Dodge, I absolutely love you. You're one of the most positive, awesome people I've ever met in my life, and I'm so grateful to call you a friend, man. Hey, likewise, man. Thank you for being here today. This is a great podcast, Eric. It's new. It's called Everyone's a Millionaire, where everybody on the show is a millionaire. And it's a crazy statistic that a lot of people don't realize, but one in 17 people in America has a net worth of a million dollars at this point. And some people will say that that number is low. Others may say that that number is high. Uh, but 16 out of 17 people aren't. And that's really what this show is all about. It's, you know, it's the show um, of the 5%, to help the other 95%, you know, learn some of the st some of the strategies and the tactics that, you know, we, us, that are here on the show, hosting the show, have utilized to to get to where we're at. So, Absolutely. Eric, give us a quick bio, if you don't mind, about, uh, you know, what, what you do and how you were able to, you know, reach the, you know, the one million mark. And it's always so weird to even talk about publicly to say that I'm a millionaire. Uh, if I rewind the clock back uh, to 2011, I had a negative net worth. Uh, it was uh, it was compounded and pretty rough. I was in the ministry full time, uh, working for the church, and I picked up a part time real estate gig just to try to get myself out of debt. Uh, I found good success in sales, and so I did part time for a number of years, and then I went full time. So I I started selling real estate full time in 2011. I added investing to that in 2012. Compound that now. Let's go fast forward. I guess that would be 11 or 12 years from then. Uh, I now own about a dozen businesses. I have a large coaching company. I have a large real estate team. I have an investment portfolio of about 80 properties. Uh, and about 20 of those I'm Airbnb and doing short-term rentals with. Uh, I have invested in some other businesses, some that have worked, some that have not. Uh, I am an entrepreneur uh, at the core of what I do. Uh, I love my family more than anything. I'm married and have two incredible kids. And all this is now uh, really trying to change my stars. I, I grew up with one foot in the welfare bucket and I had no idea what wealth or money or anything else really was. I didn't know how to live with it. And I find myself now like stumbling, fumbling and tumbling my way, uh, trying to do some good in the world. Man, that is awesome. 12 businesses, 80 different pieces of property. And uh, wow. Yeah. So you obviously qualify to be here, my friend, and we're happy to have you. Hey, All right, so this fun. podcast is short and sweet. We're going to jump on in. There's five or six questions that we ask every guest. And, you know, we may have some follow-up questions to these, but they're pretty straightforward. And I have not given Eric or any of the guests these questions prior. So here we go. Number one, what was your biggest financial mistake or setback? And how did you recover from it? Oh, okay. Uh, I found myself in 2013. I had gotten kicked out of the brokerage that I was a part of. And I, I had a team of 13 people. And I went to all of them. I'm like, all right, 
I got kicked out, but let's go start over here. And everybody said no, except for two people, uh, one admin and one agent. So I was, I, I mean, just a huge financial blunder, of course, but I ended up getting into a business relationship. I went to a, uh, what I refer to as a short term girlfriend. Uh, you know, it was, it was a, or excuse me, it was a rebound girlfriend for a short term period of time. And so I went there for nine months and sold houses there, made a terrible uh, business relationship and uh, agreed to pay them a split of $100,000 just for letting me hang my license there. When I left, they didn't like how I left. And I certainly have learned a bunch of lessons about uh, how to do this at the end. But when I left, the owner was so upset with me. He sat across from a table, told me and berated me for hours on how much of a piece of garbage I was. And he ended the conversation by saying, I'm going to make you effing pay for this. And he ended up keeping $130,000 in commissions that were owed to me. So uh, about a quarter of a million dollar business mistake by alignment with that one wrong person in a nine month period. That was, that was 10 years ago. That one still stings a little bit. Uh, and yet I am learning how to uh, right those wrongs by making sure I don't treat people that same way. Man, I love the lesson there. Yeah. You know that you can actually move forward with that. And I always start with the biggest financial mistake because I just personally feel like some of the best lessons, you know, are actually from the mistakes that we make, not necessarily the the home runs that we hit, right? Yeah. I, here's, here's, how, uh, here's how I'll correlate that is I think partnerships are so important in this industry, uh, regardless of what industry you're in. I think that partnerships can help you go faster and farther uh, it's not, it, they're not mutually exclusive, right? You can't just go fast and you can't just go far. You find the right partnership and you can do both. But yeah. if you're getting in bed with someone because it means that there is a big financial upside to it, but if you don't align with the person with how you view the world and how you treat people and, and everything else, uh, that for me is, it's a minor form of prostitution that you're willing to sell part of yourself for the financial gain and benefit of it. And, and so for me, David, I've, I've learned deep, deep lessons on getting aligned with the wrong partners. And I've also learned some incredible lessons about getting aligned with the right partners. Amen. Amen. I, I can't agree more. All right. Number two, can you share some specific strategies or tactics that you have used to increase your income and or your net worth? Sure. Uh, 2012, I bought my first investment property. And I was scared to death. We found a, a foreclosed property that was about $90,000. They don't really come around like that much anymore, Double D. Uh, but I found this uh, investment property. I'm like, oh, shoot. Okay, bank wants 30% down. So I got to put down twenty seven grand. And I didn't want to risk $27,000. It seemed asinine to me. Like, uh, what, what if it goes wrong? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? And I just played the what if game. And it almost froze me into inaction. I think that right now is is the message of where I'm going to get is that inaction is traditionally people's action because they're so afraid of well what if like I don't I don't have parents I don't have a trust fund I don't have a safety net and so I was really worried about those what ifs but I simply knew that real estate was a sound steady investment and so I went in with two other partners and we each put 10 grand in I'm like I'll risk 10 but I'm not going to risk 30 well, I put that 10 grand in and let's fast forward now, uh, next year, uh, or excuse me, in a couple of years, we will own that property outright. Well, we paid 90,000 for the property. It's now worth about $250,000. Uh, it brings in after we pay our mortgage and all our bills, it brings in about $500 a month in net profit. Of course, if the furnace doesn't go out and the shingles don't fall apart and that sort. So there's, there's always the old craps of the world. But I look at that investment of me being scared and I put in 10 grand, that's going to be worth in a couple of years, literally a net of $250,000. And we're going to get a check for twelve dollars to $1,500 a month thereafter and in perpetuity. And it was just, I had to get off my butt. I had to not sit idly by and I had to actually put some money into play. I will choose real estate over the stock market or crypto or anything else because it is the boring train that goes around the amusement park. It's no big ups, it's no big downs, but it is a predictable steady ride. And that's where I want to put my first investment cash because I need that to win. How am I going to play those other games? I need the steady investment of real estate to win. Man, I love it. And I'm the same way. I'm not interested in crypto or stocks anymore. Oh, you you put some money in crypto, buddy. I get a little, but I'm not really interested in, in, in trying to keep investing into it, right? I, that's your play money. That's, that's your, I hope this works money. 
Yeah, and if I lose every dollar of it, then I'm not going to be that upset about it just because it's yeah, it's yeah. the play money, right? But but the the strategies and the tactics that I heard from from that answer was, you know, real estate obviously was is the way in which you're you're building lots of wealth in, in a lot of different ways, of course, mm. uh, but not don't have the inaction, right? Just you got to you got to take some risk and you got to jump in. So awesome, yeah. D- David. It's been it's been really fun to do because. Uh, I buy four or five or six houses a year right now. And oftentimes it's with the money that I made off the previous houses. And so now I'm not having to inject a bunch of new cash in there. I'm just cycling it over and over again. And and that portfolio, full transparency, I, I've probably put in of my own cash about a million bucks. Mm-hmm. And that portfolio as a net worth to me is worth $8 million right now. It's amazing. And so... Uh, and then, of course, the bank owns a lot of that, too. But I, I'm sitting with $8 million of my net worth that's just in real estate holdings. And it's really, it, it's pretty rock steady. And it's it's not recession proof, but it's much more solid than the other places I think you can put your cash. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think the main thing that I love about it is, is that we are in control, right? We mm-hmm. we control who is the tenant. We control a lot of things other other than just kind of putting it somewhere and praying that the other people that are in control, make the right decisions. So love that. Cool. Yep. All right, number three. Did you have any mentors or role models who influenced your approach to wealth building? And if so, how did they help you? So I'm not necessarily asking who these people are, just how they helped you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the answer is no. And, and I, I've, 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 I've struggled with this, all right? Yeah. I, I, am, I am moldable clay, and so I've been shaped by my environments, and I've learned little lessons along the way. But I didn't have anybody close to me in my life that demonstrated how to do this. I think that there there was one little trigger that had happened is I I had gone from the ministry into real estate full time, and uh, our mutual friend Nick Shivers was a guy that I became aligned with because he had this heart to serve the world and he wanted his real estate business. Uh, he wanted to make as much money as possible through his real estate business so that he could give as much money as possible. And so my wealth has come, of course, on strategic investing uh, and alignment with the right people. And at the same time, I think that wealth is a combination of three things, David. It's an abundance of resources. It's an abundance of time. And it's uh, the connection with the right kind of purpose and culture. And when I found Nick, he was a guy that was aligned with purpose and culture. And I knew that this business could grow to be really big so that I could serve the world in a greater capacity. And that was so aligned with my heart. So I, I, I quickly said, no, I didn't have anybody that helped me to earn wealth, but I've learned how to be responsible with wealth uh, and, and, and that this is not mine to hold on to. It is instead my chance to impact the world. And that world is my world personally, but it's also the greater world that we have the privilege of being a part of. And I, I have a responsibility to serve and to serve on a really high level. And I also need to remember that what's the point of having all this if I don't have time? What's the point of being a millionaire if I don't have time? I think that the the new wealth uh, of of 2023 and beyond is people who have uh, a life by design, not by default. People that have uh, ample time and the right people that are in their corners. Absolutely, man. I love that. And that's the first time we've had somebody say no uh, to that question. But, you know, that's why I had it. Because some, that's right. Some people have a lot of mentors that guide them and others, they, they don't. And, and then they figure it out. And, you know, you're you're somebody just like that. So that's that's awesome, man. That's super, super cool. All right, number four. How do you balance risk and reward when you're actually making your investment decisions um, to every day? How do you balance the risk versus reward? <sighs> I don't know if I do it exceedingly well. Uh, I... <laughs> I would say I'm pretty quick to uh, identify the season that I'm in. Okay. If I'm in, uh, if I'm in a building season, if I'm in a hunting season, if I'm in a season in which it is it is ramen noodles before it's filet mignon, uh, I will understand the chapter that I'm in, the season that I'm in. When it reaches a point of abundance where it's predictable and safe. And everybody else is fed and fed well, I then will reward myself. And so I think as entrepreneurs, we take the largest amount of risk 
and are the last ones to receive the reward. That's at least the the strategy that I've done. Because if I want to win, it's not a win if other people aren't winning too. Yeah. And I need to make sure that other people find their wins also. And in that, I'll find my wins. So how do I balance uh, risk and reward? I'm I'm just fine risking all the time and I'll be the last to receive the reward. But then you get this like cool parent moment where you sit back and you're like, yeah. <laughs> of course, you have abundance of, uh, of of things that are creative for yourself, but you also see other people win. And that is that is a greater win than any money that's ever in my bank account. Man, I love the, that answer. That that is that is awesome. Love it. Okay, cool. All right. This is it. Number five. I like it. Okay. We got one more after this. So no okay. we'll have okay. six, but number five. Looking back, what advice would you give your younger self about managing money and or building wealth? I still don't so I want to put an asterisk on this. I still don't follow it. Uh because I live in abundance <laughs> now. Uh I think living on a budget is really important. Okay. Wealth is not about how much you make, it's about how much you keep. Yep. Absolutely. And and if you're trying to compound a serious amount of cash in your world, you can still make forty grand a year. And if you live off of thirty grand, you'll you'll be set really well. That's true. And the issue is that most people, including my younger self, I was so drawn to uh, a falsified lifestyle of, of I needed to have a nicer car or nicer clothes or a nicer house because I felt like I had to keep up with the Joneses. Uh, we live in an Instagram-esque world and I am still, a, 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 I'm, I'm as superficial as the next person. So please under, understand that this is, this is more perspective than it is actualization. Uh, but if I were to go back, uh, I would I would care a lot less about what other people were thinking, and I'd be really diligent on making sure that I was setting up those that are in my closest circle for wins. And so financially, I need to be more responsible uh, if I look back 10, 20 years ago because I was super irresponsible with money. I was using it as an identifier of instead of a, a, a tool for. Mm, I love that. Using it as an identifier of instead of a tool for. Man, that's... That's the that's a quote, right? Did I sound smart there, Double D? You sound really smart, here. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love it. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Being, you know, having a budget is is super important because, you know, at least nine out of ten people that I know or more, when they make more, they spend more. They're not necessarily saving more. And yeah, you, you got to have that the right mindset. So and, you know what what I've done to curb that because I don't have a budget is I create a yes when plan. And so let's say I want to buy a new car. Let's say I want to go on a vacation. I don't allow myself to do that until I've actually accomplished that feat, that I've checked that box, that I've earned that certain amount of money. And so let's say let's say I wanna go on that vacation and it's a $10,000 vacation. Well, I gotta make sure that I profit $50,000 in the next three months if I won't gonna spend 10 grand on a vacation, right? So I create this reward-based incentive for myself. I do that all the time. So whenever there's something that I want, I have to be able to justify it with a plan. Then I have to execute on that instead of just giving myself all the crap that I think I deserve. I always say, how can I earn rather than I deserve? Yes. Man, I love that. that is, it, and most people don't think about that. They just say, hey, I got the money now. Let's spend it. Or I got the available credit line. Let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's use it versus, hey, let's plan. And then let's go ahead and take action and, and achieve. I love yes, it, sir. Yes, I sir. I love that. Well, this is it. This is the last question, Eric. Very, very simple. But, you know, what advice would you give to the 95% of people out there that don't have a net worth of a million or more that are obviously wanting to have a net worth of a million or more? That's why they're listening to this show. They're listening to, you know, us individuals that are millionaires or have a million dollars worth of net worth, of course, or higher. And they're taking away lots of lots of useful things. But, you know, what would you say you to them, direct to them, you know, to to start doing, to start implementing, to stop doing? What would be your advice to those individuals mm -hmm. so they, too, can become one in 17 like you and I? You know, I did the math on this. If you want to make a million dollars in a year, it's five hundred dollars an hour. Is that right? Five hundred bucks an hour, two thousand right. hours is a, mi a million bucks a year. Yeah, it sounds about right. 
But I, I don't think that you make a million in a year and then you're a millionaire. I think that it is, it is a slow and steady process of, of solid decisions. And, and we live in a microwave generation where people want everything in 30 seconds. Yes. And, and rare do people see that uh, unless you were born into money or unless you were handed a bit of an opportunity or a leg up, most of us, the 17 of the 18 you're referring to, David, they have to make constant incremental steps over time. This race is not going to be magically won with a uh, with a magic pill that's going to have you hit big. You're not going to find the next Dogecoin and time it out well. You're not going to find the next GameStop and call it a big win. It is instead an incremental accumulation of slow and steady choices over time. And so if you say, I want to be a millionaire in five years, well, you got to literally do the math, not just wish it, not just put it out into existence. What's your current net worth? How much are you currently making? How many hours do you have to work? And and I will I will say this in summation is when you know your net worth, or excuse me, when you know your dollar per hour, let's say you uh, you make $50 an hour, you are at $100,000 a year job. Well, you could hire a house cleaner for 30 bucks an hour. And you take that extra three hours a week that you're cleaning your house and you put that time into more work. You're going to be $60 ahead every week because you're going to make 150, you're going to pay 90 and you're $60 ahead when you choose to leverage that out. Uh, one of my favorite guys is Alex Hormozzi. If you aren't following him on social media, his stuff is so good. Alex Hormozzi talks about how you should never even cook a meal anymore. Because the time it takes for you to go to the grocery store to prep the food to then eat the food is a couple of hours for a meal. And if you know your worth, if it's $50 an hour, all of a sudden that's $100 for that meal. When realistically you could, and then the, the cost of food also, when realistically you could have gone to a restaurant, picked up something that's literally a healthier, better choice, costs you 30 bucks, and now you're $70 ahead again. So when you can start thinking and having an actual plan instead of just a hope and a, a, a dream, if you can have an actual plan, you're going to see your wealth start accumulating pretty quickly. Man, I love that answer too. You got to have a plan, guys. You got to have a plan. You know, one of my favorite sayings and quotes is a goal without a plan is a dream. And I think that there's a lot of people out there that are dreamers and they just don't realize it. And all you got to do is you got to have a plan and then you have to act out the plan. But if you don't have a plan, all the goals you have are dreams, guys. They are not, they are not goals. Yeah, you gotta have that plan. So, Eric, thank you so much for coming on, sharing some time with us. Tons of value. Um, loved all of your answers, and it's an honor to have you on this show. Everyone's a millionaire. And uh, with that being said, guys, um, in the event that somebody wanted to connect with you, Eric, what what would be the best place? You bet. Yeah, find find me on Instagram is probably the easiest place. Real Eric Hatch. R-E-A-L. It's Eric with a K. Real Eric Hatch. You'll find me there. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you, Eric. Signing off. Thanks, buddy. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Everyone's a Millionaire. We hope you've enjoyed our discussion and that you've gained some valuable insights and ideas to help you build and grow your own wealth. We want to thank our guests for sharing their knowledge and expertise with us today. And we also want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in and joining us on this journey of financial discovery. If you've enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to our podcast, leave us a rating and a review on your favorite podcast platform. And if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to reach out to us on our website or on social media. Remember, at Everyone's a Millionaire, we believe that wealth is within reach for everyone. And we're here to help you achieve your financial goals. So until next time, keep hustling, keep learning, and keep building your wealth. Signing off.